Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. So today is going to be a very exciting day for me. I get to try out a paint that I've been dying to try out for a long, long time. I've never used this one. It's called Lucas Krill, sold by Jerry's Artorama. I am now a proud team member of Jerry's Artorama, and I want to thank them for sending me this lovely paint, some alcohol inks, and some other things. So thank you, Jerry's. The link for their website will be in the description below. So this is how their fluid paints come. They come with this cap. You poke a hole in the tip of it, and then you can pop this little top on it to seal it off. So they also sent me some of the Lucas brand pouring medium. So I'm going to tell you how to mix a pouring medium when it comes to using fluid paints. I'm also going to tell you how to do the tube paints also, but we're going to start first with fluid paints since that's what I'm using. Now, I am doing this backwards. I'm going to tell you to do it in the opposite uh, way here. So let me call the pouring medium frosting, white frosting. You want to make a cake. It's a small cake. So you don't need a lot of frosting and you want to make purple frosting. What are you going to do? Let's say the cup is a bowl and you need a half a bowl of purple frosting. What you're going to do is you're going to take your white frosting, aka the pouring medium. You're going to fill your, your cup which is being referred to as a bowl. <laughs> You're going to fill that bowl half of the way with your white frosting slash pouring medium, right? You're then going to take your paint, which is considered your food coloring, and you're going to put a couple of drops into the pouring medium at a time. Mix. If it's the right color, you're going to stop. If you want it darker, you're going to continue adding drops in and mixing in between until you hit the right color that you're looking for. It is like that when you're using a fluid paint because there's not a lot of body. But what happens when you have a tube paint and you want to use a pouring medium? You're not going to put a whole cup of pouring medium and then add to it a couple of drops of tube paint Two paint is more thick, right? And a lot of times if you're using a better brand, it's more um, pigmented. Not that the fluids aren't pigmented because they are highly, they're very pigmented. That's why you use so little. But you're going to be able to stretch that thicker form of paint further. So in that case, what you would do is you would put in, to make a half a cup of paint, about a teaspoon of your tube paint, about a teaspoon of pouring medium, and then use water to thin it out the rest of the way. All right. So you can get away with using a lot less of the products that way. And here's a little tip for you that not many on YouTube will mention. It does not matter whether you use a teaspoon of Floetrol in a color or a quart of it in one color. As long as it is in the color, you're, you're going to get the effects that you're looking for if you're using it just for effects. If you're using it to stretch it out further to make more of one color, for example, the white, we use a ton of white, then of course you're using it to make volume. But if you're using it just to get effects, you just need a little bit, that's all. So this first color here, I'm going to pour some ribbons. I'm going to do a pour using these colors, and I'm showing you there that these do not have silicone. NS means no silicone. You can see that the pouring medium itself is making some beautiful cells. Here's the second cup. No, no silicone again. Um, so you can get special effects from a pouring medium. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this pour. I'm going to stretch it out, pretty much wreck it. And then I'm going to go on top of this 
with some colors mixed with Floetrol to see what kind of reactions I get so you can see the difference, okay? So I'm going to zip it for a bit here. Just know at the end of this video, I have a little add-on bonus footage that I'm very excited to show you. So stay tuned, okay? I'll be back.
Okay, so that was a lot of fun. I highly suggest if you're a beginner that you try some ribbon pours. It's very easy to do and you can end up with a really cool painting. I'm very happy with this. So you saw me using a little device in this video. It was a glass dip pen and I'm going to explain what that is in a moment. But first, these are some alcohol inks that Jerry's sent to me that I want to try out. That is the glass dip pen that you saw me use. I have nine of them. I bought a nine pack on Amazon under 20 bucks. I'm going to put the link in the comments and the description. Um, these are just some pouring surfaces for alcohol ink. You have, you know, your alcohol that you need, alcohol inks, you need surfaces to pour on. So I use uh, Upo. I use artist panels. I use uh, the Da Vinci Pro panels that you're going to see here in a minute with the beautiful wood sides. Only thing is, though, is with these here, alcohol inks tend to seep through tape no matter what you what you do uh, when it comes to these panels. So I like to create the piece of art on the Upo paper and then attach it to the artist panel. So what I will do is I'm going to show just a little bit of this video here and then I will do a future video when I'm done doing the piece of art that explains step by step what I did. So this is a 9 by 12 piece of Upo and everybody has their own ways of doing this. The way I like to do it is I just pour some alcohol on the surface and then I start dripping my inks into the wet alcohol. Very straightforward. You're going to need some type of a blowing device that has some heat to it. So I use an embossing tool. I also have that in the Amazon shop and in the description. Now I'm just taking some more alcohol dripping it into the wet inks and blowing them around. It is very hard to create mud with alcohol inks. Uh, and, and the colors that come out of this stuff are just amazing. So my idea is to create a few backgrounds and then um, I'm going to come back with my Posca markers and do some doodling and things like that to make a painting. Um, but this part here is just showing you how I achieve that background. Another cool thing is that because these are alcohol based, you could actually do this and then pour acrylic paint, you know, maybe just down the center, have a beautiful negative space left over with these, these inks coming through. There's so much you can do with them. You could also make cups and bowls and it's a lot of fun. But anyway, I'm just showing you a couple of little trips, tricks when doing alcohol inks. You can take a paintbrush, dip it into some alcohol, and then literally make a design on your painting by pulling the ink out with the brush. However, I like these glass pens. As I said, they come in a nine pack. They come with nine little stands. You'll see them here in a minute. Uh, they're handmade. They're just so beautiful. And um, so what you do is you take your either ink or in this case, what I'm doing here is I have dipped the pen in some alcohol, straight alcohol, and I'm just making little designs playing around on my background just to demonstrate this for you. That tip holds a lot of alcohol or ink or whatever you're putting onto it. You'll be surprised how far you can go with one application of ink. So I'm going to show you here how you add the ink to the tip. You literally just rub it along there, squeezing lightly, get some, get it covered in the alcohol ink. And then you use it like a pen. It's it's that simple. See that? 
these they're just so cool but you also just saw me using it in fluid art as a way to kind of zhuzh up my painting and add in some lines and different things so I think they're a lot of fun and for the price they're under 20 bucks for nine of them I had a grand old time with them they are super easy to clean off when you're done just dip them in some rubbing alcohol and wipe them down and they are good to go and um that's it all clean it's it's that easy so they come in a nine pack as i said they also sell them single um but i like having the the multiples because you can go ahead and use one for every color that you're using there's the little stand that they come with and uh i just think they're cute so i wanted to show you those so now with alcohol inks the great thing is is if you mess up or if you doodle for your audience just to show them how these things work you can go ahead and erase everything and start all over that's the great thing about alcohol inks so you see here I just went and poured some more alcohol on and got rid of that spot that I was demonstrating for you. And now I have my beautiful background again. You're going to see a little hand in the uh, frame there holding my heat gun. My grandson wanted to help, so I threw a mask on him and put his hand on the heat gun and he was having a blast. <laughs> So that is it for today's video. Be on the lookout for a future video using this background. Go get yourself some glass dip pens. Have some fun. Modify your blooms with them. Do whatever you want with them. They're, they're just pretty to look at even. Even for a photo like this, they're just beautiful. So until the next time, I love you all and happy pouring.